All right, anybody learn, learn high school geometry? It's on the board. So we are learning eighth grade geometry. That's two years from now. Notice how many numbers are up there? There are, there are literally, in most geometry, there are literally very, very, very few numbers in geometry. Yes, there's geometry, uh, there are numbers, but numbers kind of take a backseat to relationships. Uh, this thing called proving, that's a proof. Uh, this is the thing that most high school students hate in geometry, that's a proof. And notice there's not a single number up there that you deal with, yet it's a math class. Go figure. However, in your class today, we have nothing but numbers. All right. Uh, this is why when we get to high school, I say every single day, I'm like, hey, if you want to use your calculator, go for it. I'm not doing any numbers. I'm not sure how a calculator can make your life easier. Oh, yeah, we had homework. All right, let's quiet down. Let's focus. Uh, we do have visitors. They've already been to my room once. I don't think they're coming back. But if they do come in, come in make sure you have good behavior. And I have my greeter ready to go. I am a no. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's like two people, three people. No, there's about eight people. Yeah, I know. All right, Nate, what's your question? Number, number eleven. Let's take a look at number eleven. Number eleven says that you have a trapezoid. So we have a trapezoid. I'm just drawing a generic one. Two sides are parallel. It says the area, A for area, is equal to 336. Looks like what we did at the very end of last class. Hold the noise down. It says bases, plural. One is seven, one and the larger one is 14. And it says calculate the height. It starts off with the formula. Do you remember the formula? A for area uh, equals? B1 plus B2. No, no, Nate. Oh, Chris. Hey, didn't say we we're going to start to talk. All divided by two. Now I'm going to plug in everything I know. I know the area is 336. I don't know the height, so it stays H. But I know the two bases are 7 and 14. A lot of kids would just add that immediately. Divided by two. Well, 7 plus 14 is? What? 21. So I get 336 is equal to height times 21 divided by 2. Yes? You saw this last year, one step equations. How do we get rid of 21 over 2? Okay, you're going to do it in two steps. I'm going to do it one step. It's a fraction. How do we get rid of fractions? that are attached to the multiplication. So that's a copy dot flip. So in other words, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two over 21. Yes, we could multiply both sides by two and then divide by 21, but that's two steps, I'm doing it one. So times two over 21. All right, ugly math, you got a calculator. Two times 336 divided by 21, and whatever that is is your answer. Hey, if you two are going to spend the entire class talking to each other, go do it in the dean's office. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right. One through twelve. All. Yes. Here we go. Uh, number one is uh, now you got to put always units. So if there's no units, you just put the word units. Eighty-eight units. Number two, 28 units. Uh, number three, 36 units. Number four, this is area, 90 centimeters squared. Number five, 120 meters squared. Number six, 120 centimeters squared. Number seven, ugly number, doesn't say what to round to, so I'll tell you what the book has. As long as you round it to a reasonable number, you're fine. 
59.28 kilometers squared. Some of you may have rounded to 59, some of you may have rounded to 59.3, those are all acceptable answers. All right, number eight, 24 kilometers. Number nine, 14 centimeters. Uh, number 10, what'd you get, Nate, when you did that math? What'd you get? So you're, I, I just erased it. What was the math? Two times three, three, six. Two times three, three, six divided by 21 is not a thousand. No way. I don't care what the calculator doesn't love you. Stupid calculator, a great goof. No, I just did number 10. Sorry. Did you ask for number 11? Number e, uh, 11. All right. I uh, messed up. Let's do number 11. It says the area is 132. By the way, answer number 10 is 32. Area is 132. Uh, we're given the height. We are given the height is 12. We're given uh, one of the bases is 16, but we don't know the other one. So plus B all over two. Okay. 12 divided by two. So this is 132 is equal to six times 16 plus B. Distributive property, six times 16. Uh, like 90, 72. Like 96. Plus, second arrow, 6B. Subtract 96. That answer. What'd you get? Like um, six, 36, yeah. Therefore, B equals uh, it's, a six. it's in meters, six meters. Nate, yes? Sorry for screwing that up. And last one, number 12. They're both correct. What was number 10? What was number 10? It was 32 meters. Wait, I thought they were both incorrect because neither of them did the right height. So Gina Tom found the area parallelogram uh, in different ways. Gina multiplied six. She used the bottom as the base. Times nine, that's 54. The other person, Tom, used the side instead of the bottom as the base. But the height was 5.4. 10 times 5.4 is still 54. So they're both right. They just chose to use different bases. Uh, you open your book, you read it, and think about what I just said, and you'll figure it out. All right. Homework. No, I got every single one. Okay, what is overwhelming about this chapter? Numbers. Every single day, you're going to get two to four formulas. Today is no difference. If you are not already setting up a review resource card, whatever you want to call it, remember, I could use two pages for this one because it's so much. If you're not asking questions, how do you do this? If you wait until three weeks from now, on that Friday, you are going to be so lost, just don't even take the test. Let me put the F in the grade book already because you don't stand a chance. However, if you're doing the correct thing as a student, you're asking questions. If I say something that doesn't make sense, you stop me, you say, wait, what did you just do? Uh, there is not a 9.3 B. It's going to be a review day on everything we learned. So everything up through today, we will review tomorrow worksheet and the worksheet will be just like the quiz. There should be no reason why you don't all of you get an A on the quiz. Lastly, this, woe unto you tomorrow who doesn't bring a calculator. You will not have enough time to finish the quiz. The numbers will not be friendly, specifically because I'm allowing you to use a calculator. Bring a calculator to class. The quiz is designed to be used with a calculator. Also bring your formula sheet, resource cards. We've had squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, five shapes, two formulas each, one for perimeter, one for area, that's 10 total formulas. Today we do another shape, we get two more formulas, which brings us to a total of 12 
formulas for the quiz tomorrow, or the quiz on uh, Thursday, sorry. Tomorrow's a review day. All right, here's your homework. No. Hey, don't need extra comments. One through 12 all, 318, take that off your head. All right. Um, one shape today, circles. Now, it turns out that I can prove every single formula that we use with the exception of circles. So uh, I will show you what is what you will accept as proof. It's really not a proof for the area formula. Uh, it's a good indication of why the formula is such, but you need calculus in order to prove this and you don't know calculus. So I will not be proving where the formula comes from, but I will show you at the end of class where it comes from for those of you that are interested. All right, here we go. Area of circles. Now, technically we've already done perimeter. Anybody remember formula for perimeter? 2 pi r. 2 pi r or pi d. I'll have a slide on here in a second. So that is our first real honest to God formula for perimeter that we got to remember. Because remember, for polygon, you just add up all the sides. But for circle, you got to have a formula for that sucker. Mr. Chardy is room. All right, Amber, were you here today? You said, is Amber here today? Or, uh, yeah. Were you supposed to be e-learning or complicated? Yeah. Okay, that's good enough. But they're like, she's here? I'm like, yeah. Okay, here we go. Not new vocabulary. I'm not having you write it down because we had this on the previous chapter. Um, but circle, remember, circle is a collection of points. Remember how I did this? I took the ruler, I measured 10 centimeters out to the right, I put a dot, 10 centimeters to the left, 10 centimeters on the bottom, on the top, and I did this not once, not twice, not three times, but I did it. 15 times. No, I did it an infinite amount of times. Put your mask on. I did it an infinite amount of times, and we made the shape that we call a the circle is not the center, it's not the outside, it's this black curve. That's the actual circle. Paradoxically or ironically, the center is not part of the circle. It's just this curved black line. That is the circle. So it's the set of all the points that are the same distance away from a given point. Okay? All right. Though most circles, we color them, that the, this color portion is not part of the circle. All right. Also recall that for a circle, right, uh, circumference, if you need to put this in your book of truth, put, I'm thinking about high school. If you need to put this in your formula sheet, put this on your formula sheet. The formula for circumference, Jaden, was what? Pi. Pi. Or two pi r, right? C for circumference, this is the perimeter. So this is calculating the perimeter. Is pi times the diameter. Or 2 pi r, either one. So this thing pi brings up the question of, uh, here's the two formulas. What the heck is pi? So it turns out, we found out a long, 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 long time ago that if you take any circle and you measure its outside distance and you divide it by its diameter, we always get pi. Pi is a constant. It's an irrational number. It means a number that goes on forever, never stops, never repeats itself. Oh, sure, there's lots of ones in pi, but the ones don't repeat. It doesn't go one, 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 one. It goes 3.14, and then that, that doesn't ever repeat, right? Okay, so that's, the, that's this idea of pi. Take the circumference, divide it by the diameter, you get to this thing called pi. That is the Greek letter P. Pi is the Greek letter P. If your name is Peter, right? This is how you spell your name with this. That's Greek letter P. That's actually lowercase. Uppercase looks similar. Okay. Uh, and we're going to use 3.14 or 22 sevens. Now, since you have a calculator, you have two options. Most calculators have a pi key. And if you press the pi key, you get a very long approximation of pi. 
I believe that our book does not use the pi key. It uses 3.14. So if you're checking the odds in the back of the book and you choose to press the pi key, your number is just slightly more accurate than the book's number. Tomorrow when I call out the answers, and you're like, wait a minute, you said 6.67 and I got 6.68. Yeah, yours is a bit more accurate than mine, okay? You have a choice of either using 3.14 or the pi key. I will let you choose, okay? Uh, no, I won't show you where the pi key is, but you can find it yourself. I don't know if that saves you any time. If you've got to hunt for the pi key, it doesn't save you any time. But if you know where the pi key is, okay, it's two keystrokes away. It takes four keystrokes to type in 3.14. It takes two keystrokes on most calculators to press the pi button. I will let you choose which one you want. All right, today is not on perimeter, although that's one of the formulas we're responsible for. Uh, we're gonna be doing area. So as I said before, at the end of class, I'll show you where the formula comes from. It's a pretty good proof, but it's not a, not a good math proof. What's the problem with circle and area? You can't put a bunch of squares. You can't put a bunch of squares inside a circle, right? Well, I did notice I overlapped. Okay, so that's the issue of uh, you know filling full of squares and counting. It would be a very challenging thing to do. So instead, we rely on a formula. I'll show where it comes from at the end of class. So write this down, box one. That's the formula. By the way. This is also why I don't like that one formula for perimeter, which says that perimeter C is equal to 2 pi R. Guess why I don't like this? It's got a 2. It's got a 2. It's got an R. It's got an R. It's got a pi. It's got a pi. Square always gets you bigger than multiplying by 2 unless you have a number less than 1. Okay. So most math teachers, we like pi d. Well, it's where pi comes from anyway. Uh, we like pi d so that way you won't confuse it with 2 pi r. It's not that you can't use 2 pi r. It's a perfectly fine formula. It's just that students, when they're first learning this, will make a mistake and they'll use 2 pi r for the area instead of pi r squared. All right, by Gendes, what do you got to do first? you got to do exponents before multiplication. I'll say that again. If you're doing this by hand, you're doing it with a calculator, right? But if you're doing it by hand, you have to absolutely do exponents first. With a calculator, you can type in a scientific or higher. Who's got the dollar calculator? Jackson. No, he doesn't. Who's got a dollar calculator? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a dollar calculator, then you can type it in as it appears. If you have a scientific calculator, you can type it in exactly the way it appears. But be warned, you're going to take plenty of tests where you don't have a calculator. They're going to expect you to do this calculation. When you're doing it by hand, square R before you multiply by 3.14. All right. Lastly, as a statement I made before, if you don't want to use the pi key, then you're going to type in 3.14, and you will be getting an approximate answer. By the way, no matter whether you use the pi key or 3.14, it's an approximation. Pi key gives you a better approximation, but their calculator is still rounding. All right, doing it by hand, there's fractions involved, use 22 over 7 as your approximation. So how does this work? Uh, you need one thing, and what's the one thing? Do I have a radius? Yeah. So I plug four in for R and I go to town. Grab your calculators. Type that in, tell me what you get. What'd you guys get? 50.265. Hey, who's got their book open for homework? What does it say? Round to the nearest? Tonight for homework, what does it say? What does it say? Round to the nearest. It doesn't say. It doesn't say, but a couple of them do say, leave your answers in terms of pi. 
If the question says, leave your answer in terms of pi, guess what the answer for this one is? There's your answer. I left the answer in terms of pi. In other words, that's fancy words for don't multiply by pi, leave pi as a symbol. Because if you leave it like this, that's what the area does equal. It equals 16 times pi. But as soon as I multiply by 3.14, this equal sign becomes approximation. So this is why I don't believe this is all the questions, but it's only it's a couple of the uh, composite shape ones. Okay, so there's only one or two of them are like that. All the other ones say multiply by 3.14, so round to the nearest hundredth for your answers. So therefore, Jackson, the answer was. Uh, Oh, like the big answer? The approximate answer. Like 50.24. So, exact answer, leave left in terms of pi, approximate answer. Okay, so that is right. We okay? Cool. But if the question says leave it in terms of pi, there's your answer. Either 16 times pi or pi times 16. What? Okay, sorry. I know how to get 15, but I just Oh, no, no. All right. Box two, do we have a radius? Why am I asking that question? Because eventually it won't be a radius, it'll be a and what we have to do before you plug it in. Uh, divide that right divide the diameter by two. So always ensure that you have a radius. Hey, the radius is 10, so I can plug it directly in. Hey, what's the answer in terms of pi? What's the answer in terms of pi? 100 pi. There's the answer in terms of pi. But what's the approximate answer? Not 3,000. Do you want to do both? Get the approximate and. No, the book only asks for one. So you, you need to be careful. What was the answer? Okay, 314 centimeters squared. Make sure you put your units. And since we're doing area, it is squared. Questions? Okay, so you you times two. Or, yeah, you, I did times by two. Well, you, 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 uh, squared it. Yeah, you squared it. So then and that's where the hundred came from. Yeah, and then you did by times. times 10, right? No, it's a hundred now. Okay. Right? Because ten squared is a hundred. Yeah. So it's pi times a hundred, approximately okay. three point one four. Okay. You type that in your calculator, you didn't get 314. Guess what you got? A whole bunch of numbers, right? They don't stop. Goes all the way across your screen. So once again, I take 10 and I plug it into the formula and I go to town. Wait, why did I write five? Because you have to write half. Because that is not a radius, that is a, a diameter. that is a diameter. Yes, David. Agree because box three has. Okay. Yeah, I gave you one where it was a radius, now I'm giving you one where it's a diameter just to make sure that you understand that the radius here is five. Jenna, final answer. What you get? Tell me what to do mathematically. Winter, tell me what to do mathematically. Oh, um, uh, I never times it by two. What does that mean? Times it by itself twice, which is what? Then I do that and I multiply it by. Jenna. Your role as a student, if you don't understand something, you're asking questions. You're raising your hand. You're not waiting till the test day to write on your paper IDK. I don't get any of this. It's an inappropriate answer at that point. It's an appropriate answer right now. I don't get this. Do your job, teacher. Teach it to me. It's an inappropriate answer if we get to test day and you write on your paper, I don't know how to do area of a circle. Jenna, you know how to do area of a circle? Yes or no? Don't say yes if you if that's just a quiet be down. 
Okay. Yes. So would it be if you do the, the, the whatever is that one called the straight line diameter thing is you can't you can't at the end divide by two, right? Because remember the previous one we did have a radius of ten. We got three hundred fourteen as an answer, yeah. and you can divide three hundred fourteen as an answer. We don't get seventy eight. We got one hundred and fifty something. So you can't wait to divide to the very end. You got to do it as your first step. Yeah. What if, what if you divide it? Say that one more time. What if you divide it and it's a decimal? Then it's a decimal. You got a calculator. Nobody panics. Okay. Yeah. And so you panic when you got to do it by hand. Yes. Yes. All right. Do box four all by yourself. And I'm coming around to make sure that I see your work. Okay. Actually, I'm going to take a pause here. Listen up, because we haven't talked about this. Um, what is your quiz? What is your test going to look like since I'm allowing you to use a calculator? Guess what it's not going to look like? Good numbers. Good numbers. It's, no. Guess what your answer is going to look like on your quiz or your test from now on if you have a calculator in your hand? It's not going to be just the answer. If you put just the answer, it's wrong. Here is what you must do. Is everybody listening? Yes. Well, what is a reasonable step that you should do? You should find that you use the two steps. Step number one is you identify the shape. What's the shape? Circle. And what does it ask me to do? Find the area. So step number one is everybody listening? Yes. You must have this on all quiz and tests, and please on your homework. You're going to put the formula there, right there. That tells me what? They know what you're doing. That you know what you're doing because you know it's a circle and you know that you're calculating an area. Because remember, I could ask for perimeters well, too, different formula. Step one, you write the formula. I said two steps. What's step two? Plug in the right numbers. Oh, okay. So for the first one, is that a radius? Yes. yes. So I expect on your paper that it says A equals pi six squared. Now what can you do? Now you, can do the now you can grab your calculator and calculate to your heart's content. I need to see these, well, technically three, because the third would be your answer. I need to see this on your test and your quiz. If you leave this off, if you don't have this written, and you don't have this written, and you have that written, even if it's correct, I will take away points. you got to show me that you know what you're doing. You didn't copy it off the person sitting next to you. And if you make a silly mistake with your calculator, I can at least know that you did everything right up to that point. Clearly, you did a calculator error. You fat fingered your calculator. You don't know how to use a square button. You don't know where the pi key is, something like that. But I can at least give you partial credit for plugging everything in correctly. By the way, I just showed you the final answer. Yeah. It goes for everything. I don't care if it's a square and it has a side of two and I say what the area is and you write four, let's say it's in centimeters, centimeters squared because you're like, well, it's just two times two. That seems ridiculous. Why do I need to write that? That's what I want. I want the formula. I want the, plug the numbers in and then you can grab your calculator away you go. You, it's going to be, like I said, over 20 formulas. We're already up to over 10 right now. That's yeah, easy. Yeah. This test is. All right. Breakfast in the middle one, what you get? How much? Um, Mine rounded to 154. Am I wrong? No, because it's 0.9. Okay, 0.9. Oh, no. All right. What? Kaden, what you got for this one? Last one. Tell me what to do. Is it a radius or diameter? Diam radius. So can we just plug that in? The only time we can't plug it in is if it's a, we got to divide that by two first, not last, but first. So plug it in. Do the math. With a calculator, this is like no big deal. What do you got? Tell me what you're typing into your calculator. Just read the formula. 
What's it say first? So type in pi, 3.14. Do that. You got 3.14 typed in? Times, what's R? Hit 3.1 and hit your square button on your calculator. Do you know where the square button is? Then do that. Then hit enter. What do you got? Oh my, gosh. oh, my head hurts. This X with the square next to He's getting help. He's getting help. The answer is about 30, which is what you got. All right. Dirty. All right. Hey, at least Caden did the calculation and he has now figured out how to use his calculator. Do you guys know how to do this? Yes. Woe unto you if we get all the way to quiz day and you're like, well, I just didn't know where the square button was on my calculator. Caden didn't, at least up until about 30 seconds ago. Now he does. All right. What? I got no okay. Do you remember the three steps I said you're going to do? You didn't do any of them. Oh, did not do that. All right. I don't know. Step number one write the formula. Where is it written? Step number two plug in the numbers. Step number three grab your calculator, get to an answer. Type it in exactly as it appears. What? What's the radius? It's not 14. No, it's not. What's the radius? What's the radius? See, I get 194. What are all the things you want to write? Why are you multiplying by 62? What do you mean 62? It says pi times 62. Oh my God. I got 113. Yes. All right. Now I got two people that finally figured out how to use their calculator. Do I need any more? No. I mean, so, at, least, at least they admitted they didn't know how to use their calculator. Some of you might be hiding. They're like, I don't know. Please don't call me. Yes. Then it's time for a new calculator. My man's All right. Back up here. All right. Switching gears. Did you get it? All right. Look up here. Hey, what's the difference between this one and the previous one? You have to find the. There's no picture. It's just words. Oh, by the way, it's done the same way. Step number one, write the formula. I wrote the formula. Step number two, plug in the numbers. You're really plugging in one number for both area and perimeter. What number am I plugging into this one? Uh, six. Five. I'm plugging in not a six. I'm plugging in a three. I need to see these two steps right here. Oh, yeah. Amanda, do that calculation on your calculator real quick for me. And then, Jay, you translate. I can't ever hear him in. Or Jim. Yeah. Twenty-eight twenty-six. That would be about twenty-eight. And I got the same answer. All right. Amanda knows what she's doing. I'm so do you guys? Yeah, right. I don't have enough time to go to every individual student. So your job as a student is like, what? I got 54. What's going on? You ask the question. I got I got yeah. so what are all the things you want to try? You want to try the formula? I need you to write the formula. I need you to plug in the numbers. And then from there, if you're not doing it by hand, you grab your calculator, go right to the answer. Like, yes. So what if like you don't write the formula like person, but you only write what the numbers is? Does that somehow? So the issue is more so some of the formulas that look alike, some of the formulas like just just do me a favor and just write the formula. Right? Plus, it gives you a better chance of you got to look at it twice. One, you got to think about the formula. And then I'm looking at it. I'm like, well, what do I need? I need A and I need an R. 
there's more chance than just I'm just going to plug them and not. And granted, you know, the kids that are smart, they can do this. It seems like an extra step, um, but it's a good habit to get into. Yeah. Uh, wait, do we have to write the, uh, the, the formula on every single Every problem? single one, right? Of, hey, wait, it's a test with a... Jace, you're going to be doing the test in 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Let's be honest, right? So it's not that much more work. All right. Uh, do box five, please. Box five. Now, uh, Jace, I'll give you this. If it's a box that has two questions, you have to write twice. Okay. Uh, wait. Hey, do the worksheet, not the homework, if you're lost. Oh, I you just said that one. you had a whole bunch of mistakes. So I think I did this one right, but these two. Well, then do them again. I already did. Same thing that he asked me to do. Yep. Okay. So. Just make sure that we write the formulas. That's the first step. Okay. Well, that is good. Help. I don't understand this. Good. It's really good. Like, yeah. I'm the area. I'm looking at this. Where's the square button? So, <laughs> what? What's what? the radius? Oh, I got one. All right. I can't say this for all the calculators, but for those of you who have a TI-30, if you have a uh, graphing calculator, right, when you type it in, so let's say it's uh, uh, the radius is uh, 5, so 3.14, if I'm not using the pi key, times, what is the radius, 5, I hit the square button, look at your screen before you hit enter, what's it say? No, before you hit the enter button, what does it say? It literally says what we want it to say. It says what we want it to say. So before you hit the enter, you can look at it. You can say, yep, that's exactly right. And be 100% assured because your calculator is going to say some number. It could be right. It could be wrong. Your calculator doesn't love you. It doesn't care about you, right? If you're not checking for a reasonable answer, then you're just going to write what's on the screen. But if you look at the screen before you hit enter, you can be confident that you've typed in the right thing. Okay. Last answer. What is it? Last one. Nine point seven. Well, fifty and nine are way off from each other. I got twelve point six. I got a fifty, a nine, and a twelve. We got big problems. <laughs> Step number one: we write the formula. I got fifty. Step number two: quiet, please. We plug in the numbers for all of you that said different answers. What do we need to plug into the formula? Two. What do we need to plug into the answer? We need the radius. What's the radius? Two. Two. So once again, I need A is equal to pi times two squared. That's what you type into your calculator. And if you do that correctly, you don't sure aren't going to get 50. Two squared is four. Four times pi is about three. Four times three is 12. We better be getting a number close to 12, maybe a little bit bigger. So what's the real answer? And guess what I know for those that got 50, what you did? You plugged in four. Four squared is 16. 16 times three is about 48. You plugged in the wrong number. So it's just pi four. All right, moving on. So this was Nate's question. What happens instead of they give us the uh, radius, they give me the area. Everyone pay attention. This is new. Oh. Okay. 
Notice they haven't given me the radius, they've given me the area. I still start off with the area formula. Step number two, I plug in what I know. See what I know? Okay. Do you know what R is? No. Do you know what pi is? Yes. What's pi? So. Smell or temperature? No. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's yeah. spotting yeah. in the middle. Okay. All right. Up here, please. Up here. So here's the form. Everybody okay so far? I don't know what R is, but I know what pi. Pi is 3.14. How is 3.14 attached to R squared? Pi. How do we get rid of multiplication? So we're going to divide both sides by 3.14. We grab our calculator. What do we get? Uh, grab your calculators, do this. Now, here is the problem. It sure feels like we just got the answer. We did it. Did everyone get about 14.6? Yes. Hey. Does that say R or does it say R squared? Now, everyone listen. How do you get rid of addition? How do you get rid of multiplication? Are you listening? Yes. No, you're not. You're talking. Now, listen. Kai, on the board. How do we get rid of addition? How do we get rid of multiplication? Hey. Eyeballs on the board. Jenna, you don't know what you're doing on this one. Listen, no one does. Uh, can I try a third time? Yes. How do you get rid of addition? Yes. How do you get rid of multiplication? Yes. How do we get rid of, seriously, I'm losing my brain here. I Just stop and stop interrupting my class and pay attention. Do your job as a student. Fourth time? How do we get rid of addition? Subtraction. How do we get rid of multiplication? Division. Negative exponent. No. How do we get rid of, we don't get rid of squaring by division. So we get rid of squaring by. So what do we do to both sides? Okay. You can't do this in one step on your calculator. You got to do this first, going back. We plug in the number. Uh, all we have is area. We divided both sides by pi. We got that number. I got to do one extra step. I got to take your answer in. Now, here's the deal. A couple different calculators out there. A few calculators, probably not many in this room. We could immediately just hit the square root button. It would tell you the answer. If you got a $1 calculator, that's what you can do. We got more expensive calculators. You're going to have to hit the square root button first and then type that number in. You're going to have to hit the square root button first and then type that one in. So this one will require work. So what do we get for an answer? 3.8 and 8.3 are really different from each other. Uh, it's a second 3.8 I heard. Mr. C. Yes. Where is the square root button? I have no idea what calculator you got. The TI 84 plus. TI 84. Go. Go to two and D. Go down one, two, three, four. And it's a colored button. It's blue. So you have to hit the blue button first and then the fifth button down on the left side. All right, do we all agree that the answer is 3.8? Yes. All right, once again, some of you will be hiding and you all shake your head because you just want the class to end, but we got to do this calculation. All right, let's do it again. New problem. It says find the radius of a circle that has an area of 12. There's your setup. First step, what do we do? First step, what do we do? 
Now what? Now what? I plugged in the numbers. Now what? You can't take your calculator and get to an answer. You have to do this one by hand. In other words, what do I do first? Divide both numbers by pi. Divide both sides by pi. Okay, now you grab your calculator. 12 divided by 3.14 or the pi key, either one. Yes? This doesn't say R, it says R squared. How do we get rid of the square? Now, if you don't have a calculator in your hand and you're not doing this, you're not doing your job. To get rid of squaring, we take the square root of both sides. Make sure that you get that number right there. I rounded it to two. It's actually 1.9. 1. 1. If you aren't getting 1.9 rounded to two, you don't know what you're doing. Let either me or the person sitting next to you help you show you what you did wrong. Is everyone claiming you got this right? Yes. Jenna, you got this right? Once again, you're gonna ask questions when you don't get this. Did you get 3.8? Yes or no? You yes. Now take the square root of 3.8. That means you have to hit the square root button first. Then type in 3.8 and then hit enter. Yes, got it. Okay. Yeah. Everyone got got basically two. Yes? Yeah. All right. I can make the yes. So do you have to round it or uh if the book doesn't say it's up to you. Okay. So but remember, this. when we're taking square roots of pi, we're and you use the pi button, we're gonna get a number that doesn't stop. Yeah. Okay. Hey. How can I make this problem slightly more challenging? Uh, by giving us a tough number. Oh, by no, a you got a calculator. By giving us no numbers. How can Diameter. I make this problem slightly Diameter. tougher? Diameter. So if the radius is two. Diameter squared. Okay. So that's what I'm about to do. Ooh. Last one, and then bell's going to ring. That's it's tomorrow, true. isn't it? Hold on. See it? Don't do it. No. You just divide. All right. Watch me do this one real quick. You see what it's asking? Yeah. So you solve this one. Don't pack up. We're not done. Open your book. Hey. The setup is the same. Even though it says find the diameter, I still need an R. We divide both sides by pi. Calculate it. We take the square root of both sides. I get an answer, but what do you got to do with this answer? Divide two. Three Absolutely three. not. But you got to double it. You got to multiply by two. All right, I'm not done. We're going to go past the bell here. Are you good on finding radius or diameter if I give you the area? Yes. All right. Last thing is this. What's the shape? Rectangle. What's the shape? Circle. What's the formula for area? Length times width. Based on height, length times width, whatever you want. Okay. What's the formula for area? Uh, area equals pi r two. Guess what you're going to do with those two shapes? Combine them. You're going to push them together. When you push them together, everyone pay attention. You get a composite shape. Yesterday we did composite shape with rectangles and triangles. Now we're going to do it with all of those shapes and circles. So, rectangle? Yes. Circle. Push them together. Rectangle. What do you got? Composite shapes. What's the formula? Uh, uh, What's the formula? How much of the rectangle do we have? So, we got length times width. How much of the circle do we have? Half. Plus one half of pi r squared. Dang. 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 Let's go. There's the formula for that shape. Doesn't have a name. Come on. Uh, right here. There's your formula. Uh, no, we're not writing the formula because it comes in so many different flavors. Hey, what's the shape? Rectangle. What's the shape? Circle. An open circle. If I take that and push it now to my rectangle, 
What do we have? What's the area of the shape now? Is it plus the circle? Is it minus the whole circle? Minus half of it. So it'd be length times width. Stop moving and packing up. I said we're not done. So it's length times width. Subtracting by half circle. Subtracting half a circle. Tonight for homework, that's why I wanted your book open. They're going to give you some weird, funky circles. They won't be a full circle. They won't be a half circle. Listen to me. They're going to be weird shapes. What's the formula for the green? Uh, length times width. What's the formula for the green? Length times width plus. What's the formula for the green? Rectangle. What's the formula for the red? Square. Well, what's the shape of a basketball court? Length times width. We're calculating red now. Minus. Oh no. What's the shape of the green? Minus L W. Plus in parentheses half. I can't write it. I'm out of space. Half a circle. Composite shapes can get you into a whole bunch of weird formulas, but the best thing is that it's still just easy, friendly shapes. You just gotta logically think it through. Okay. In the book, they have a bunch of these. This one right here. You see it? Yeah. If I did the green, it would be circle what? One. Circle two. plus or minus. Minus, minus two of the smaller ones. All right, get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> Donovan, questions? No, I understand it pretty good with the calculator. Oh, sounds good. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Oh, yeah.